Welcome folks. What I have for you today is a, uh, a Rochester dual jet. I think it's a 210 model. And what I'm going to show you today is how to get the idle mixture screws out of there because in these particular ones, this is a 1980 model off of a, a small block V8 that GM made. Whether it's a Pontiac Oles, very similar to most of those ones at Brown 1980. Um, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of this thing for those of you who haven't seen one of these things before. It's basically a carburetor, mixes the air and the gasoline to make your engine go in the right proportions that is. Okay, so that's what the top looks like. So now what I'm going to do, get my little helper out of the way, it happens to be a hockey puck that makes things sit flat for me when things are a little bit uneven. And um, now I'll turn this thing up. Now I'll just do this slowly. This is the top of it. If you took the air cleaner housing off of the engine, that's what you'd be seeing. Mind you, probably a lot cleaner than this dirty old one. Now I'm going to flip it 90 degrees and show you the front end of this thing. Now. For this particular one, uh, like I mentioned, it was a 1980 model. Um, and the same thing would apply for about the same model year for a quadrajet, meaning a four barrel carburetor with the vacuum secondaries. Now, um, normally, the two idle mixture screws, they're, they're sitting right here, uh, depending on the model you have. Now, this particular one had hardened steel plugs, okay, that were over top of this. Like you'll see holes in here right now, and I'll explain to you how I opened those up and uh, what the um, instructions in a rebuild kit would tell you in, in order to get these hardened steel plugs or caps out of here to um, expose your idle mixture screws in order to get them to um, take them out of the throttle body or the base plate and uh, so you can clean the idle circuit and everything and clean the needles up because especially older gasoline when it sits in, around for any length of time it turns into like a, a hardened uh, varnish type of a glue and that really restricts uh, fuel and possibly even air passages depending on where we are in the carburetor's um, different circuits. But for today we're going to be doing the um, idle mixture circuit and uh, showing you how to get these idle mixture screws out of there. Now I'll show you what the older ones used to look like. Um, where's my little helper? Most of the idle mixture screws, the ones earlier than that, look typically like this. They had a a tapered needle on the end. They all pr pretty much have a tapered needle on the end. Different uh, angles, mind you. Uh, threaded portion and usually a spring here to retain the setting on there. And usually the older ones, they also had a screwdriver slot on the end to put a screwdriver in to, to adjust the idle mixture. Okay. And uh, generally in a two barrel or four barrel carburetor, you'll find two of these screws. Now the ones I'm going to take out of here, actually I have one out already. Um, but I'm going to show you how to get this other one out and the procedure that I used in order to get at the thing before I got it out. Okay, what the instructions say to do in order to get these hardened steel plugs out of there so you can get at the idle mixture screws. Now I'll flip it over one more time again. Um, which way should we do it? Maybe that way so I can see it too. Uh, you'll notice here I have, that's if the video can, you know, it should display it. I'm not going to zoom in too much because then things go out of frame when I flip things around here. So, uh, I'll just get my handy pointer, being a pencil. Uh, right here I penciled in two, two um, not penciled, but used a, a small felt pen. And there's two little divots or recesses here that are like holes. They're actually guide marks that are cast into the bottom of the throttle body here. And I have an X in between, okay. X marks the spot, kind of like buried treasure, but in this case it's, it's where you got to basically get a hammer and a punch. This is what the uh, one of the rebuild kit instructions uh, recommended in order to uh, to get this hardened steel plug out. You actually have to destroy part of this um, the bottom of the throttle body here. So what they wanted you to do from what I recall reading there is take a punch and go between those two dots and then hit it a few times. Now make sure before you start any of this if you go that route and I'm going to show you how to not to destroy it in a few minutes here. But anytime you're working around these things where parts may fly or little bits and pieces, especially this hardened steel plug stuff that's going on in here, you get a piece of that shrapnel flying around. It's, it's like uh, very damaging, especially to eyes. You know, usually your skin can repair itself over time, but do you start, uh, you know, sending metal towards your eyes? Uh, that's not a very good thing. Okay, don't want anybody losing their eyesight over something that I happen to say on here. So always wear your eye protection. And anybody who's in the near vicinity, too, if they're watching you or whatever, make sure they've got some eye protection on, too. Okay, so what they wanted to do, like I was mentioning with the instructions in the rebuild kit, was to take a hammer and a punch and then hit this. And actually, I believe they said to break into where the, the steel plug is. Okay, it's a short plug. Um, the shell of this plug 
actually I can display it here a little bit better what's actually still remaining in there. I got a piece of copper tubing here. Now normally the plug when you're looking at it on the front of the carburetor it's, it's filled in on one end. You can't see right? Okay so this is actually a smaller one of these mind you is pressed right in there with a the solid end on, on this end here so you can't get at the mixture adjusting or to adjust the mixture screws rather idle mixture screws. So that's what they look like only a smaller version of this. Alright so that was the the real destructive way of doing it. And after I, I read that, I actually had this carburetor sitting around and I was, I was wondering, geez, what could I do um, without having to destroy these two portions here, taking part of the aluminum uh, throttle body base out, a big chunk. I mean, who wants to look at their carburetor with chunks missing? I don't. So what I came up with is, um, I'll flip it back this way now. So I thought about it, hardened steel plugs. Hmm, let's see now. We have a file. Okay, uh, file won't touch hardened steel. It'll it'll file soft steel, so uh, files out of the question. So then uh, I thought about it some more. You can't drill it; it's just too hard to drill. So what I did is I, I got out my uh, the high speed electric grinder, also known as a Dremel, and I put a little grindstone on there. And what I did, like you see here, there's holes here now, right? These were solidly capped with that metal plug that I was telling you about, the hardened steel plug. So I just took my time, put my safety glasses on, and I, I went to it there. Okay, so I, I actually had this apart, the carburetor's apart, just with a throttle body and a vise, okay? You want to steady that up and then get two hands, right, on your die grinder or a little electric grinder. And just keep grinding around on the end cap here, okay? And I just kept grinding until I actually broke through and uh, removed the, the end part of that cap, like the steel part of the shell much like this here, is still in the throttle body itself, okay? So um, that's how I got to doing this, to remove that, that the end of the hardened steel plug in order to uh, get at these idle mixture screws. I already have this one out, but what I'll show you what I came up with, okay, is a, um, and I can actually show you the, the idle mixture screw that's out of this left-hand side here. It's actually a uh, Looks like so. It doesn't have a slot in the end like the screwdriver or anything like that. Okay, it's a hexagonal head, six-sided piece of uh, material, and then it's got a thread on it, and then your taper for the uh, that goes into the throttle body to adjust the idle mixture. Okay, but seeing how it didn't have a slot, and I had a very limited area because the hardened steel plug shell is still in there, so I found this. Uh, I'll back up a bit. Um, I actually thought about what I could use, so I looked around my my little workshop here and got all kinds of scrap kind of metal and tubing whatnot and I found this piece of copper tubing. Okay, it's a little bit flared on that end but that's not the end I'm using. But this end here, and initially what I did is it was just a nice fit on that hexagonal part of the idle mixture screw. And then I thought, uh, actually today, as a matter of fact, just before I'm shooting this video here, so I thought, what's, you know, if, if there's a little bit of slippage there then I can't count my number of turns. And also while I'm at it, I put a little, I had a piece of tape here marking what I'm keeping this piece of tubing for, so I didn't use it for another purpose. So this is a residual for, from some tape that I had on here, so I just put a line on there with the, the felt pen, so that when I turn this thing, I can count the number of turns. You can actually put little X's, N's, or colors, whatever you long, want along there, so you can actually watch how you're turning. Seeing as you don't have, you can't see a screwdriver in the end of this thing like the older models had. So what I did is, um, made it even better. Uh, like I said just before this video here, I put the tubing on the end of there, it was a snug fit. And I just rotated it three times and kept squishing this copper, and copper is fairly soft. So I actually made my own socket, so to speak. So if I can hold it still enough, I can actually show you what, what's happened in the vise. Actually, i got to get some light on it too. But I, got, I filed the end so it would shine a bit, and you can see there's a hexagonal shape there, much like a socket. Um, I can probably tighten the fit up later, but just, just for today's video, I just decided to do that. So there you go, I can actually turn these screws now. Okay, got my own little wrench, okay? And if need be, I can probably put a spring or something on here if there's a limited access in front of the carb. You don't want to be chopping fingers off in a, you know, in a radiator fan or anything like that. But this is just for a demonstration for today. Like I say, I've already taken one out, but I've got the other one in here, and so I'll show you how good it works. So like I say, I ground off the end of these hard, hardened metal uh, plugs here, and this is plenty of room. See how it rattles around in there, right? There's lots of room for this uh, piece of tubing. The outside diameter of this tubing is a quarter inch or a little bit better in diameter, so there's it's fairly small. So I got my little homemade 
extension socket if you will and I'm just going to turn that and take this out of there. Like I say, once you get the end of those hardened steel plugs out of there, or if you do it the way they, uh, they recommend or say in the instructions, is they want you to punch this and break a big chunk out of either side here between those two marks I was showing you. So we'll just unscrew this and we'll see what we have in here. Alright, so they've gone the extra mile with these too. Um, there's a little washer. And there's a spring in there to keep, once you set your idle mixture screws, you don't want them adjusting themselves from vibration, heat, and what have you. So what I'll do is I'll put a comparison up here for you. Okay, here's the actual one that came out. There's two sets of these, remember. Um, there's the spring that's going to roll on me like so, but I'll put them in their, um, their areas where they're going to go. This washer here goes right underneath the head of this hexagonal portion here. All right, And here's what a regular one looks like. This one's out of a Holly one barrel, believe it or not, from way back when. But typically the older carburetors, they had a lar much larger screw in there with, like I say, a screwdriver slot in the end, so you could just get a screwdriver and um, just go ahead and adjust it that way. But this one, and also I have to mention too, I, I was thinking about cutting a hacks or getting a hacksaw and cutting a screwdriver slot in the end there, but that was kind of a no-go. Apparently they used uh, some heat treatment or better steel, and it's a hardened steel. Uh, harder than I want to try to put a hacksaw through. It would hardly even file, so that's when I came up with this little do-it-yourself or do-it-myself uh, idle mixture adjusting screw copper tubing hexagonal socket extension, if you will. How's that for a mouthful of words? I actually got them out in one shot. So that's what you're, you're faced with there. Now I'll take this one away just so we don't confuse matters. But there's two sets of these. One goes in here and one goes in here. The washer goes on to the threaded portion of the um, idle mixture screw with the spring following. So to put them back in, spring goes in first. Actually you can assemble this thing and if you're careful, mind you, you see in this video the camera is overhead. It's actually on the ceiling when you're looking down. So this would normally be sitting this way and I would be going in this way on the, on the bench this way, right? And so gravity wouldn't be uh, taking its effect on me. So digging those things out was harder than you'd normally do it because it would be laying flat on the horizontal plane rather than I got this thing pointing in the vertical plane up towards the ceiling. So that's what's came, what actually came out of here. One per side, there's, there's what you have. And like I say, there's a tapered, uh, there's a tapered section on the end of the needle. Hopefully I can hold it still enough, but that's that's the close-up there, right? That you see there, there's what they look like. Get the lighting on it, that seems to disappear. Very small. Because see, it's a hexagonal uh, shape on the end, six-sided. And it's just flat on the end, there's no um, screwdriver slot, like I was mentioning. So that's uh, how I came up with uh, the non-destructible way of removing the idle mixture screws in, in this... Uh, this one's a 1980 model. Uh, if you have something similar, you can do what I've done here so that you don't end up in, uh, destroying the bottom. Like I say, if you do it the way they say in the instructions in the rebuild kit, they want you to put a punch right where my thumbnail is there and break a section of this out to get at that hardened steel plug. But, uh, so that's what I came up with. See that? It's not damaged in any way. I can get at my idle mixture screws. Alright, so it's just a simple matter of putting, I won't put the spring on in there, okay? Um, I'll do one side here. Actually, I could I could show you how easy that goes, even in the vertical plane that I'm, I'm uh, videoing this. So just basically get your washer, slide it on to the idle mixture screw, then the spring. I think what the washer does is it keeps the spring from going clickety-click because it's not totally flat all the way around. It's got a bit of a, a section where it would grab and it would probably make sort of an, an intermittent kind of a, a thing with the washer there. It makes it a smoother adjustment and there's enough pressure with the spring once it's compressed and down to where it's supposed to be when it's adjusted that it'll keep this screw from, the idle mixture screw from turning. Alright, so just, you can just assemble it and then put it in like so. This one's going to work, I hope. And there's the, the handy dandy homemade copper tubing long socket that I say I was uh, I had it for a while but I did just did the hexagonal part squishing in a vise to make a socket just about an hour or so ago so hot off the press you might say so you get in there like so remember when you're doing anything with idle mixture screws be gentle when you come down to the bottom you don't want to be cranking a lot of uh, torque on them okay nice and gently and as soon as they stop 
Uh, you can look at your instructions, manual, what have you, to show you the recommended turns out for getting it started, but you can go three or four turns. It doesn't matter because once the engine warms up, you're going to be adjusting anyway. You could actually go four turns. It'll be a bit rich, but you're not worrying about that because it's only to get the engine running and warmed up. Okay, so you can go three or four turns, take your pick so it's bottomed there. And like I say, I have a mark on here, and you can put as many marks as you want anywhere on this piece of tape, what have you. I just put one line with a felt pen just for a reference point. Now with the hex on here, it can be pretty accurate, especially once I squeeze this down a little tighter so it doesn't have so much uh, play in it when I, I torque it. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll just go, um, what the heck, four turns out. I usually go three, but I'll go four. So my felt pen mark is here, so I just go one, two, three, and four. Okay, that one's done just to get the engine running. Mind you, this has got to be on the engine and assembled with gaskets and fuel lines and linkage and everything else. This is just on the bench. I was just basically showing you once you've got it cleaned and, uh, you know, all the new parts and rebuilt, then uh, it could be um, one of the last things you do. It can go any at any point. These things are protected once they're in there, once you've got the cleaning and everything out of, out of the way. So like I say, there's two on, a, on this. If you had a single barrel carburetor with much the same effect, you'd only have one idle mixture screw, generally speaking. Okay, but since it's a two barrel carburetor, or even in the case of a quadrajet being a four barrel carburetor, you're going to have two idle mixture screws. Okay, so there you have it for today, folks. That was my way of coming up without uh, destroying the throttle body on the, the bottom of this thing. It just looks prettier. To me, it's more professional than some guy going along and butchering the poor thing. But I guess um, that's what they had to do to keep uh, keep you and I out of there, especially the guys that are new to the game and don't know um, what's going on. It was it was uh, put there to keep the uh, probably the the carbon monoxide level somewhere around about one half of a percent or 0.5 percent, if I remember rightly, the way these things were set up with the original gas back in the 70s, and in this case, and for the 80s. Uh, type of gasoline. Uh, another thing I'll just mention before I part company here is uh, the gasoline back in the 70s I remember reading uh, a website or two a while back and it was saying that the gas of today as compared to the gas in the 70s was 3% about 3% uh, leaner nowadays so in, in even some places I've seen they claim up as, as much as 5% leaner they're putting like 10% uh, what is it ethanol in there which is alcohol Alcohol itself needs to be usually jetted uh, twice as rich as gasoline from what I recall. Okay, so there's uh, my message for today. A little bit of everything included. Like I say, if you don't want to hit the X marks the spot and break your throttle body aluminum casting all the bits here where that steel um, hardened steel plug is, tamper proof steel hardened steel plug is, you can, you can do what I did. Just be careful with your eyes and people around you. And grinding is probably even safer than breaking these out. You get um, hardened steel shrapnel flying around. I mean, what would you rather have? A little bit of grinding dust or have shrapnel nailing somebody in the eye? So I'm going to do the safety approach for today. So there you have it, folks. That's my video for today. Take care. Have a nice day and uh, bye for now.